Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to do a technical follow-up video on our discussion about how blockchain databases work. In that video, we discussed a general overview of what makes blockchains different from traditional databases, a high-level look at how the cryptography is used to secure these databases, and what they're useful for. Today, we're going to do a more technical example using Bitcoin to show how chaining works, how proof of work ties in, and overall how cryptography is used to keep blockchains secure from uh, invalid transactions and malicious parties. So first, let's discuss something that's included in every Bitcoin block called the block header. This header contains a summary of important information used to help secure the blockchain and summarize all of the transactions that have occurred within that block. This includes the software version of the Bitcoin protocol that's running, a timestamp showing what time this block was found, and a Merkley root, which is a sort of summary of all the transactions that are included in the block. Uh, if any of the transactions in the block were to change, the Merkley root would change. So this allows us to kind of summarize what's going on in the block without having to include all of the block data uh, in our proof of work algorithm. It also includes a difficulty target for proof of work, a nonce value, which is the answer to the cryptographic puzzle that miners solve when they're doing proof of work, and most importantly, for the chaining part of blockchain, a hash of the previous block's header. So, when we have a couple blocks chained together, let's look at this kind of hypothetical example to see how this works. So let's say in our zero block, our genesis block of our Bitcoin blockchain, we have a difficulty of this eight, you know, this four bit number, excuse me, uh, represented in binary. This nonce, a previous block hash of zero, because that's what a genesis block has, and a transaction where Alice sends Bob one unit of Bitcoin or whatever currency is going on in this blockchain. In the next block, the previous block hash of this block was found to be 0101. So again, this is hypothetical, but this is the same kind of data that's included in a Bitcoin block. We have a transaction where Alice sends Bob five units of Bitcoin or this currency. And we have a difficulty again of 1000 and a nonce of 0111. And finally, in our second block, well really third block, we have a difficulty that's a little bit uh, harder, a new nonce, and a transaction where Bob pays Alice back those six units of currency that she sent him. And we have this previous block hash of 0011. Now in this example, uh, Alice is kind enough to loan Bob six units of this currency or Bitcoin, whatever you want to think of it of, and uh, Bob is kind enough to pay her back. But let's say Bob wants to try to launch an attack on this blockchain because he's feeling greedy and he really doesn't want to just pay Alice this money back, he wants to keep some money for himself. So in this hypothetical example, Bob tries to modify the blockchain and introduce a new set of blocks to the network where in the first transaction, Alice actually gives him 10 Bitcoin or 10 units of currency. And down the line, Bob says, oh yeah, she gave me the other five. And at the end, Bob pays Alice back the six that she thinks she gave Bob. Well, how does a blockchain prevent this data from being forged on the network? Because if you remember with a blockchain, it's decentralized. Anyone can run this software, anyone can uh, help to validate transactions on the network, and so anybody has access to this data and not only can read it, but try to modify it since it's part of a decentralized protocol. Well, Bitcoin prevents this with proof of work as well as this cryptographic chaining that goes on within each block. Remember that each block contains a hash, which is a cryptographic summary of the previous block's header data. And included in that header data is a summary of all the transactions. So if any one transaction were to change in a block, the entire block header as well as the block hash would be changed. So what happens when Bob tries to change this information in the genesis block of this hypothetical Bitcoin or other currency blockchain? Well, 
Since proof of work relies on this cryptographic puzzle being solved based on the data that's in the block, the nonce that was originally found on the valid blockchain is no longer valid proof of work for this chain. So all the nodes on the network would reject this block and reject this chain as invalid because the proof of work answer isn't correct according to the rules of the protocol. So if Bob wants this invalid block to be found, he would have to use his computing power to try to find a valid proof of work answer that the rest of the nodes on the network would accept. But now this is just for one block. So here's where it gets interesting and here's what makes blockchain so immutable and uh, so secure when it comes to historical data. When Bob changes the transaction and therefore the transaction summary and the whole block header in this blockchain, he does change the proof of work answer. And by doing that, he changes the block header that's generated here. So even if Bob finds a correct answer for proof of work at this block, he has changed the header of this block and the block hash because uh, all of the data that's contained is different. If you remember that our hash functions make, uh, you know, give a different answer for every input data, you would know that this block header is going to be different. Now going down the line, block 1 contains the previous block hash of the genesis block, block 0. And since this data changed, the nonce that was found in the original blockchain is invalid here as well. So Bob would have to do proof of work not only for this block, but also for this block, for all the nodes on the network to see his chain is valid. And this goes further down in the chain because Bob would now have to do proof of work for this block because this block, previous block hash, has changed as well. So the further back you go in history in a blockchain, the more difficult it becomes for proof of work to be forged than these blocks to be forged because you would have to redo proof of work in a span of 10 minutes for many, many blocks when the difficulty on the network is making it so all of these nodes, all of this hashing power is just going to find proof of work for the block that's at the head of the chain. And so Satoshi showed mathematically in the Bitcoin white paper that if you go back about six blocks, this becomes nearly impossible to do. So with the combination of the proof of work algorithm and this chaining where each block contains a summary of the previous block, in the form of this previous block hash, um, header hash, I should say, it becomes nearly impossible to forge transactions and modify the blockchain without following the legitimate rules of the software protocol. So when everyone plays nice, everyone's just working together to secure the blockchain by finding a proof of work answer for the current block. If you have a malicious party that's trying to forge previous transactions, they would have to come up with so much computing power that they would be competing with the rest of the world that's trying to behave properly on this network. And unless there's some magical entity out there we don't know about with tons of untapped computing power, it's just impossible. It's not going to work. So this has been a technical look at how blockchain databases work and how they're secured in a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. The technical article on the website has a uh, more real example uh, where actual SHA-256 hashes and actual difficulty um, targets that would be realistic in Bitcoin are used. This way, for example, just contains short hashes and numbers to make it easy to go over in a video. So if you're curious about this a little more in depth and want to explore some more, check out that article. As well, I have a cool little proof of work utility on my uh, GitHub and the Chain Tutorials GitHub that shows some uh, real libraries that you could use to theoretically implement your own proof of work system. Of course, as well, we have some proof of work tutorials as this is such an important concept for blockchaining. You can check those videos as well as articles out on our YouTube and the Chain Tutorials website. As always, I hope you found this tutorial on blockchain databases informative and interesting, and thank you very much for watching.